Welcome to Kentuckiana Real Talk, hosted by Jeremy Ward. If you enjoy the podcast, please subscribe on the podcast provider of your choice and consider subscribing to the Jeremy Ward Team YouTube channel for more expert real estate insights. Now, let's start the show. This is Kentuckiana Real Talk, Seth McKim, Christina McKim, and we are sitting down with Marcus Hundley. We're filling in for Jeremy. Filling in for the incomparable Jeremy Ward today. And uh, we're just going to chit chat with Marcus here about a few things. Pleasure to be here, guys. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Marcus, let's talk about this house we got on Alban Ford. It's awesome. Beautiful, beautiful. 25 acres, backed by a creek, 7,200 square feet, listed at 975. Marcus has some really great payment options and buy down rates so he wants i want him to talk about that a little slice of paradise so we'll talk about that here in a second of course i just wanted to mention that you can't afford not to buy this house first and foremost because there's so many deer you'll <laughs> save money on the <laughs> grocery store alone with the, how many deer i saw well, don't forget about the fish in the creek and the yeah. fish in the creek let's not even get you'll started. never have to go to the grocery and we'll have a garden you just need plenty of water okay all right all right do you guys know it's national pickle day no it is but thank you shout out to my wife katie hunley and my daughter, Blakely Hunley, for that information. Um, so how do you so celebrate Pickle Day? Uh, so that's a good question. When we get to the closing table on Alvin Ford, mm-hmm. we'll have pickle pizza. Okay. <laughs> or Chick-fil-A. You guys like pickle on your Chick-fil-A? There yeah. you go. I like it. I love it. Yeah. But we're not in a pickle, despite rates being high, because oh my gosh, we've got programs like the 2-1 buy them. Okay, so um, what we hear constantly from, from buyers is this want or this desire that is rates increase to decrease the price. Mm-hmm. And so what I'm here to propose is a 2-1 buy-down, which is a little bit different of a strategy. So a 2-1 buy-down is really very simple. Let's say we go and price the interest rate market. So you get pre-approved and your interest rate, let's say, is 7.375. Okay. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to have the seller actually discount that rate 2% the first year and 1% the second year. I love it. Okay. So why would we then take, let's say, you know, ten to $15,000 in discount? the purchase price, that amount versus doing a 2-1 buy-down. Because, well, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, please, because jump the in. The yes. difference is huge, isn't it? It's monstrous. Isn't it like 90 bucks or something versus 900? I'm glad you asked. I brought my calculator. I did the math. Okay. <laughs> so on this property, if we were to reduce the price by $17,000, it would save you about $90 per month. Okay. On, Using, your, on your mortgage payment. On your mortgage mm-hmm. payment. Great, great point. If we use the 2-1 buy-down and discount down 2%, which would bring us to a 5.375% for our first year. Which is a great rate. Yes, it is. It's fantastic. Anyone remember the fives? Yeah. yeah I remember the sure. fives. Those were good times. What song was the number one when rates were in the five? <laughs> <laughs> we need to find that out. Uh, we'll be back there soon, okay? And we'll get there, okay? That's the yes. point about year number three coming up here in a minute. Um, but well, if we're in the fives at 5.375, that's going to save you $955 and 77 cents per month for the first year. So that makes more sense. Yes, it does. Now, second year, you're still gonna save 488, and the third and final year, the rate's gonna return to market rate. So that's an important point too, okay? This is not an adjustable rate mortgage. Your mortgage isn't gonna go to 15 or 20%, um, like it probably was when your parents bought their first house. Shout out to the boomers, Mm -hmm. okay? For the boomer squad. Yeah, see, okay, so everything's okay. Just watch Ghostbusters, they talk about 20%. Absolutely. (laughs) That was normal. It's just a, uh, it's just an intelligent and strategic way to utilize the money, mm-hmm. okay? Yeah. And utilize the money where you care about it the most, which is in the monthly payment. I agree with that. And a five percent is is a pretty much average rate. When I got into real estate in fifteen, mm-hmm. that was a, that was the average rate four point nine three point. And it was. A, I don't, do you think we'll ever see COVID? I'm calling them the COVID rates again. That's a great question. Um, I, you know, I don't have a crystal ball for mortgage interest rates, and I'm not sure, but I don't think so. Yeah. I think we'll settle back in, like you said, to the average mm-hmm. of the fives. Um, and again, that's the beauty of this product too. Let's front load. Let's get all these savings through the two one buy down, and then let's refinance. Right. The the loan. We know that the average American keeps their loan for about eighteen to twenty four months anyway. So why not take advantage of that period, get a huge discount, and then refinance when rates mm-hmm. drop. So what? What are we talking about? What's what's the cost for that? Zero cost. So the cost is to the seller, which mm-hmm. again is where it's intelligent because we're going to have the seller pay for that buy down. Mm-hmm. And so on a house of this size, you know, it's gonna it's gonna be considerable. It could be anywhere from fifteen to seventeen thousand dollars, but it's worth it 
And like we talked about, it's going to save you a lot more money where it counts in the beginning on mm-hmm. that monthly right. payment where you feel it the most. But then yeah. when you refinance, you're refinancing way less, correct? So your payments even... I want to use the word lesser. Hey, lesser is a word we can use that. <laughs> and yeah, so that's a great point. So we're going to amortize that down. I've got a sheet here, and I'll get this sheet out in the comments where you guys can view this online. We actually went ahead and created a presentation through a software we use called Mortgage Coach that, you know, Christina, mm-hmm. as you know, we send to every person that we pre approve. Yeah. That's going to have that loan balance down to 710 by the time we refinance. That's a good point, too, because my hope, okay, is that we're back in the fives this time next year. So right. what, what happens if rates go back to the fives? year two instead of year three, Mm -hmm. you can refinance and any money that was set aside for this buy down can be used to pay those closing costs or even buy down the loan further. Okay. So you don't lose it. So you're not losing it, Mm -hmm. which is another huge value. It is. So that that would be a benefit to anybody in any price Mm -hmm. point if, if, if the only thing stopping them is the interest rate. Interest rate. Totally. So, you know, if you're a listing agent and you've had a house that sat for a while, you know, before you do your next price reduction, you know, let's talk about, you know, marketing a 2-1 buy down and what that would look like for you and your sellers and your buyers. Or, or two, if you're a buyer's agent and you've got first-time home buyers or even second-time home buyers that are spooked by rates and payment, this mm-hmm. is definitely something we should look at because mm-hmm. I do think it's an intelligent Absolutely. strategy. Because I think everybody's realized that the market has switched from seller's market. We are now in the buyer's market. Mm-hmm. And sellers have to, we have to be a little bit more creative yep. and or do buy downs. Yes. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, that's part of it. I think. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, this the the house and Jake, our fabulous video uh, video whatever, videographer, video guy, is going to while we're talking. He's going to. I'm so excited to see the cuts he does for the for the this for the house. property because it's got a massive pole barn. Anyway, it's three two six eight Alban Ford, and Marcus can finance that house for you all. It's amazing. I'd live there. Seth would let me move again. I'd buy it. You know, you've been in it. I, have. Yeah. I mean, it's huge. It's, seven, it's got a brand new home theater. Everything. It's, it's I, amazing. You, you know, in addition to all the deer you'll bag and the fish you'll catch and the garden you'll have, I, it's worth it just for the view on the back porch. Mm-hmm. Like, literally, you'll save people's lives because you'll enjoy your coffee <laughs> in that peaceful, serene setting and yep. just your own little slice of heaven. So imagine, you know, you got you could go to Gatlinburg, you know, every winter, every Christmas, every Thanksgiving, take a vacation twice a year. Or you could just enjoy your coffee on your beautiful back porch. So okay. it's well, a no-brainer. It, it's such a rare property to have two sides of the property surrounded by Buck Creek. Yes. 25 acres. It's flat. Yes. With some woods. I mean, it's like the perfect combo. I know I'm a broken record here too, but I just imagine um, <laughs> the terror coming from my wife when she realizes I'm outside shooting sporting clips <laughs> from the back porch. Because it's literally the perfect flat open setting. It is. Well, there's mm-hmm. a, the hunting blind is back there already. You're going to have a hunting blind. See, there. again, deer, fish. RV storage. I mean, it's, it's got a mm-hmm. workshop. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's mm-hmm. the most amazing car. We could fill that car with that uh, garage with cars. Love that. Or four wheelers. Yes. Or four wheelers. So let's chat about first time home buyer program. Ooh, great, great, great question. Great point. All right. So we have a lot of different programs for first time home buyers. Can I just take a step back, though, and just rip for a minute uh, on first time home buying and what I'm seeing in the market? And Absolutely. I'd love your guys' feedback on this. Yeah. You're probably seeing Let's this a lot. Let's too. Go. Do you see a lot of first time home buyers hesitant right now? on making their purchase and, and going from renting to to taking on a mortgage? Some. It depends on how long they've been thinking about purchasing a home. Yeah. So if they started this mental process when rates were real low, they are. Um, but if, if they've been kind of thrust into the world and um, have haven't no knowledge of – Three percent interest rates. True, they, you know, they have to do what they have to do. So they have, you know, it's not stopping those buyers. I don't think. I would agree with that statement. Yeah, it's just big vocab words. Have you seen or heard though of some first-time home buyers that that want to wait for rates to come down or wait for the market that. to shift? A few. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, when the market shifts though and the rates come down, let's talk about how that's good. We're going to be amen. Six the prices. Months on the list, mm-hmm. No appraisal gaps. No inspections. Mm-hmm. And seventeen offers. Yeah, the data is pretty staggering, right? So we've seen that probably thirty-five or forty percent of active home buyers have signed on them themselves, mm-hmm. and so they're they've got searches set up either with an agent or with uh, Zillow, but they're not actively going and viewing homes. Mm-hmm. So um, that's that's what's going to be coming back on, right? So right. you know, you could leave work at 3.30 and drive down the interstate, you know, chill, or you could leave work at five o'clock and be in rush hour with everybody else. And I, I think that's what's coming. 
Um, I think, though, the math is staggering. And I've heard a lot of people talk about this, but I think they missed the boat um, pretty substantially. And so I'll just cover just a little bit of this because I think it's so powerful to actually hear and see in practice. So let's say we have somebody renting. I was doing some quick stats on the way here. And it looks like the average rent in this area for a 3-1, which is probably what most first-time home buyers are looking to buy, um, is going to be about $1,400 per month, yeah. um, which All is right. pretty crazy. Okay, So where most people fixate or focus on, hey, why you should go ahead and buy versus renting is because you're going to do what if you rent for two years? What are you going to do with that $1,400 a month? You're going to give it to your landlord. You're giving it to the landlord. You're literally setting a burn barrel out in front of you and you're lighting it on fire. Okay, Well, $1,400... Uh, times that two years is a hair over $16,000, okay? Right. So you could get a used Toyota Camry or you could light the money on fire. That aside, that's where most people stop. And so what I want to focus on is kind of what else you're leaving on the table here, which I think is where the math becomes staggering. So um, over the course of that uh, that $16,000 per year times two years, you're almost $33,000, right? Mm -hmm. um, now, what are we missing? What happens to the house itself when you buy a house after two years? Well, you have equity now, and it's appreciated. appreciated. Yeah, it's appreciated. So if a client, we wouldn't have to do the exact math. I won't hold you to this, and neither would a buyer. <laughs> uh, two years from now, what do you think a two hundred thousand dollars house would be worth conservatively? Conservatively, two thirty. I love it. I was thinking like two twenty, two twenty five, two thirty is even better. That's mm -hmm. awesome. As long as it's tear it up. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Right. Yeah, don't park yeah. your, make okay. improvements. Don't Take park your motorcycle in the living room. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> I have that, to, that hurts value. It, it can. <laughs> it depends on the motorcycle and it depends the flooring. You know, yeah. what kind of floor? You got LVP in there, right? Scratchers in there. Mm -hmm. Depends. Yeah. Really so, uh, don't don't paint the entire house pink. Although it could make for a cool Airbnb. I'm not sure. Um, anyway, uh, the house is going to appreciate. All right. So we've already said that we've we've got about thirty three thousand that you've wasted on rent. Okay. Now, the house is appreciated 30000 okay? So this is where the spread gets huge. Mm -hmm. Now we're at $63,000 in missed opportunity. But what else have we done? We, we paid money. Where did the money go? The money paid down the mortgage, okay? So let's just call that eight to $10,000, okay? Now we're talking about seventy dollars to $73,000 that we've lost by waiting two years. And yeah. I don't know if you, about you guys, but could you tell me what you were doing mm. right now this time, this day in 2021? Nope. Time goes fast. So I think a year turns into two years, two years turns into three. And when you're in a lease, I throw away $73,000. I could think of a lot cooler stuff to spend $73,000 mm -hmm. on. Right. So that's why I think it's so powerful. So if you've, again, if you're an agent, you've got first time home buyers that are scared, tiptoeing in the market, show them these numbers, bring them to me. We actually have a visual representation of this. Um, that kind of shows that spread and how huge it gets. Um, but also, um, if you're a first-time homebuyer, don't be scared. Call call Seth, call Christina. Well, and Marcus, because he knows the numbers. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I believe in it, you know? So right. I, I, I threw away, gosh, half a million dollars in rent before I decided I was no longer a child and wanted to buy my first house, mm -hmm. you know? Right, but again, so. the rates might be higher than they were during COVID, but they're going to come down. Sure. So it makes more sense because oh, when man. the market goes back to fire and those and that house value goes up to like 60000 again, you've got it at a good price. Great right. point. Well, this also doesn't factor in a refinance. So these numbers will be even more staggering if you were to refinance and lower those payments even further. So great point. Uh, anytime there's a shift in the market, whichever way it goes, mm -hmm. my experience is people typically pause and they wait it out. Like what's going to happen? Mm -hmm. This this uncertainty makes people uncomfortable, and so they want to have some type of idea of what's about to happen. So if there's a quick shift one way or the other, I've seen people just put the brakes on. I think, and right. in the market, it's done that a couple times over the summer, and for the last few weeks, it's been pretty steady. Mm -hmm. And so people were like, okay, well, this is what it is. I know what to expect. And they've started to pick up. Well, everybody thinks that summer is like the hot time to sell, but we're actually slowest in the summer, because especially in Indiana, because the um, vacations are so short. Yep. Mm -hmm. Like our son, go, he goes back to school to Jan usually July 28th. Wow. So the yeah. summers are just short. So we're busiest in fall through winter. Mm -hmm. I like love we just, that. We just pinned it, I think, five pounds this week. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. I've been slammed too. I think Seth, you hit the nail on the head there too. And I think that 
you know, when, when opportunity meets preparation, that's when it's dynamite. Yeah. And I think when the market pivots and switches, the movers and shakers make moves. Mm -hmm. And then I think a lot of the consumers then follow. Uh, and that's probably what we see is that everyone slows down. The people that know, that see an opportunity to, to grab a house at a good purchase price in a pivoting market, grab those houses. And then everyone else follows suit and is playing catch up. Right. So, that's true. How do you think the market's going to play? we got an election here coming. We do. That's a great question and a great point. Um, um, historically, interest rates go down. Yeah. You know, uh, gas prices go down, right? Everyone's trying to show their best face. <laughs> uh, so, you know, um, no, no politics aside there, I think regardless of what we see in terms of the election, we'll see, you know, a pretty good year next year for the market. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, no what question. we compare that to. And then, you know, as we've observed, if you had asked me a year ago, you know, will interest rates approach the sevens, I would have said you're crazy, right? Right. But they did. So, you know, it's hard telling what will happen. So, again, when, when opportunity meets preparation is when you have the most success. Mm -hmm. So I would say if, if you're on the fence, now is definitely the time. Mm -hmm. and yeah. If it does improve instead of getting worse, then, again, we can refinance. Refinance, yeah. That makes sense to me. But we see a lot of downward pressure. Um, in fact, I think we've... We're trending in the right direction gradually, which yeah, is Yeah, rates came down this week, didn't they? They did. Yeah. They did, finally, yeah. Hot dog. Hot naked dog. Well, sometimes people get focused on the rate versus the payment. Mm -hmm. And I think that's an important thing to say. Like, I had a client, they were obsessed with 400000 and I was like, that's great, but you may be super comfortable with that payment, or you may not like it, so let's not focus on the price, right. maybe the payment. Yeah, payment's Once they, they got that out of their mind... They were like, oh, I can't afford this. And it was just, it was a really cool thing to see. I like to say we need to advise the mortgage strategy. And so, you know, when we have a client that's really, really, really hyper um, focused on rate, we like to take a step back and address that and say, look, we'll talk about rate, but rate is only one of the levers we can pull. Right. And depending on what you're, as we saw with the 2 1 buy down, um, you know, it, it's only one component of that entire structure. And it also depends on the client's goals. You know, if a client is to flip the house in six months, their their goals and our strategy is going to be a lot different. Yeah. If this is their forever home and they're retiring, or this is their first home, mm -hmm. um, or if this is just an investment property like we mentioned. You're right. Yeah, that makes total sense. Well, Lumber Snack, do you have anything else? We have to hashtag it Lumber Snack, Jake. Yes. And the mild one. <laughs> and mild muncher. McCotty. I got all pounds. I can go all day. Pumpkin britches is probably the best. Which one's your favorite and least favorite? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. All right. Another Pumpkin movie. britches is the oldest. It is the oldest. That was the, that's the OG. Uh, Lumber snack, I think it's funniest. Yes. <laughs> it's good. Hashtag favorite. Um, I don't, I'm not wild about, um, uh, the mile munch. I don't know. Yeah. It's a little aggressive. I mean, it's fitting. It's, it's, you're it's weird. An incredible runner, but. I mean. It's weird. I just imagine you running. Okay. The wind's blowing. You have a long hair for some reason instead of short hair. Yeah. And you're, you're just snacking on like some Doritos. Well, uh, I, I think about, I think about uh, Pac-Man. Yeah. <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna, we're going to get you like a running onesie that has like Pac-Man on it. Oh my gosh, yes. They probably have them. Okay, I got a funny story. Mm -hmm. Jake, you can definitely put this in the podcast. So my son had his friends over, okay? And Seth is standing in our kitchen yeah. in his running shorts. And I don't know if you've ever seen running shorts. Uh -huh. like, they are short. Yep. I like I like to wear real running shorts. I have a pair. I wear them as uh, one inch, so One inch in, in seam. Real? Yeah. Oh. I walk into the kitchen. I said, what are you doing? He's like, I'm dancing. He's got arms up and he's shaking his butt. And Seth Jr.'s friend walks into the kitchen, does this face, and runs back like upstairs. That. Because he thought <laughs> Seth was in his underwear, dancing for me in the kitchen. <laughs> Risk it was, it was thing it's the scene of risky business. And <laughs> runs down the road. <laughs> Something. I don't know, but it was nah. fabulous. Yeah. That poor child. That's awesome. So we had to go get him. We're like, listen, it's running short. Not his underwear. Yeah, my daughter, like I said, she's five, mm -hmm. uh, so she's really funny. So every time I'm getting changed or heading to the gym or anything, if I'm not wearing a shirt, I'm naked. Yeah. So that's the, <laughs> she'll yell, actually, Mommy, Daddy's naked again. <laughs> again. It's, 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 yeah, it's kind of uncomfortable. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, I'm like, Honey, I'm, it's just a shirt. It's, it's fine. It'll be okay. Uh, well, okay. we 
all have our fun at home, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So get your own home and have your own fun, right? Yes. <laughs> and and let me come and hunt deer and shoot sporting clays and ride four wheelers. And motorcycles. And motorcycles. Seth drives the golf cart while four wheeler. We could make our own beef jerky. Yeah, we could. Totally make your own. Did you go win that full barn on Alvin Four? I did. It was incredible. There was a, a workshop. Like uh, there was tons and tons and tons of space. Yeah, well, they had a, the it's forty eight by seventy yep, loft and it's two stories. It's kind of a second story in it. Yeah. Yeah. So my thought too, you you honestly also can't afford to not buy that house because again, it's like the world's greatest dog house. I mean, it, it, you almost want to get in trouble just so you're out of the house and in that thing. I'd yeah. Rather, rather stay out there, especially the shop park that's cute and cool. Yes. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Marcus, uh, Sorry, thank you very sorry. much for taking a few minutes to sit down with us, explaining uh, you know, the 2 1 buy down and then per putting into perspective what happens over two years versus, you know, if you continue to rent or if you decide to purchase. Um, those numbers are staggering. Yeah. And so yeah. putting those together for us. Um, if people want to get a hold of you, how do they reach you? Thank you. I was about to drop that in there. Uh, so my direct line is 859-321-5437. Okay. That's 859-321-5437. We'll put that in the phone, phone as well. Phone is always on. I'm always available. If you call me at 3 in the morning, I'm probably not going to answer, but I'll call you back at 5 or 6 when I leave the oh, gym. So you do usually answer the phone really early. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I'm up. I usually work in, uh, on loan stuff, you know, between 7 and 9 because then my phone's not ringing so I can focus. Mm -hmm. But uh, so, thanks me so and the entire much. Team of statewide would uh, like to thank you guys for letting us come Absolutely. out and talk. So, yeah. So, thanks to Marcus and we're Christina and Seth, your local realtor. We're a good time. Super good negotiators, too. Okay. Yes, exactly. Thanks for spending some time with us. We'll see you next time.